left of the box. For children who identify as transgender, I want you to also know that these policies are being implemented in order to protect the choices you have regarding altering your... The choices you have by taking them away. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's get to the actual news report here. But Luca Roger Duncan isn't so sure. At 25, he remembers very well what it was like to be a transgender teen. In her statement, she says, we want these kids to know that they're loved, but in doing what she's doing and in saying what she's saying, she's implying that that love is in fact conditional. Alberta is the third Canadian province to introduce a policy on parental rights when it comes to gender identity. Ontario also wants to do this. Alberta, Saskatchewan and New Brunswick now require parental consent for students under the age of 16 who want to change their name or pronouns. Now they say changes to name or gender identity and again what they're not saying here is that also unofficially teachers aren't allowed to use the proper gender of trans kids unless they have parental consent, like not even unofficially in class so that they can feel safe. And also Saskatchewan was sued by organizations because it is a violation of the Charters of Rights and Freedoms. And uh, Scott Moe passed the notwithstanding clause to override that because in Canada we have that option. Politicians have that options of saying, we understand we're violating your charters of rights and freedoms, but we don't care. But Alberta has taken its measures further, banning hormonal treatment and puberty blockers for children under 16 and prohibiting gender reaffirming surgery for those 17 and under. I, I certainly do not want um, children to be making decisions before maybe they've even had sex. But physicians who... What the... F like, okay, this is just me reenacting my actual re reaction to when I saw this video first. I actually, like, what the f did she just say? 17 and under. I, I certainly do not want um, children to be making decisions before maybe they've even had sex. But physicians... Why are you that concerned about children's sex lives? Ah, <clears throat> uh, you know, before you can have, re you know, before you can have a uh, bottom surgery, you need to test out that sex first to see if you enjoy it the way it is, because that's what this is about, isn't it? It's about how you like your sex. Now it got cut off there. So maybe it's out of context. I, I found a little bit of a longer clip. We'll we'll get to this after. <laughs> it's not bad. No, it's it's horrible. It's horrible. Physicians who work with the transgender community say they were not consulted. We have guidelines. We have science. We have everything backing up the decisions we make. So it's not a place of a premier or political party to tell us what to do medically. The policy is not enforceable until it becomes legislation. When that happens, EGAL Canada plans to challenge the new laws in court. It's deeply troubling that Alberta has taken this decision because it amounts to an attempt to erase gender diverse people from society. Those applauding Alberta's policy are calling it an important first step. The uh, cult, the insanity that's been sweeping the culture with this transgender ideology, the theory of gender identity, the theory of gender expression, it's, uh, it's collapsing before our eyes and, and thank goodness. Roger Duncan has a different message for transgender youth. I would tell them that it's scary and it's okay to feel sad and angry and grieve. He says he's proof that transgender people exist, have a voice, and that as a community, that voice will be heard. And Heather's with me now. Heather, Premier Smith says she doesn't want to politicize this whole issue. Her critics say that's exactly what she's doing. How much of this is pandering to social conservatives who help get her elected? Yeah, Donna, you really can't ignore how Danielle Smith became Premier. She claimed the party leadership after appealing to the most socially conservative faction of the UCP and was then elected by sweeping 
the most conservative uh, rural uh, r r rural ridings. So this was a legislation, this was a policy that was very popular at the UCP's most recent AGM. And given the experience of Jason Kenney, who lost party support after angering those social conservatives, you can really see the politics at play. Donna? All right, Heather Yurick's West in Calgary. Okay, so about that statement of Danielle Smith worried that children might want to, you know, change their gender before they try out sex to see if they like it. <clears throat> there is a little bit of a longer clip on that. This is the fuller statement, and so I'm trying my best to pause it as quickly as I can and stuff. Journey of, of adults who want to transition to another gender as uh, as far as um as as they are adults darn it you can't go backwards on these so yeah she's saying oh yeah if you're an adult i totally support your decision after you've gone through irreversible puberty in, in the gender that wasn't right for you then you can transition as opposed to you know going through the proper untraumatic uh puberty adults and able to to accept the consequences of those decisions I, I certainly do not want um, children to be making decisions before maybe they've even had sex. That's where she says, before maybe they even have sex. You're the premier of a province. There's cameras in front of you. You do know the recording. My God, to say this in front of people. Maybe they've even had sex like would you... your gender has nothing to do with your sexuality you know people aren't transitioning because they think they might like the sex better they're transitioning because of their gender it's not the same thing it's about whether they want to to uh, to stop that aspect of their life or before they've even con okay so again it's hard because this is a youtube short uh, but basically contemplated with there's no way wanna... to go back basically she thinks once you've transitioned you can't have sex it is what we're saying we might have to watch this again just so we watch it in full because i keep on cutting it off it is a youtube short so we'll watch it again after i've done interrupting but she just basically said that you know, before they decided about sex. So from what I'm gathering, she doesn't understand that transgender people, they they still get laid, they still get sex, they still have intimacy like that. I have kids to cut off. So maybe they haven't even thought about having kids at that point. There are ways to transition and still have biological babies if that's what your desire is. But there's always this push that, you know, what about the kids? What about kids? Believe me, w when people are transitioning, that's all the doctors talk about. They're very, doctors are still very old fashioned when it comes to people and having babies. And so many people, uh, women I know of in their 30s who had kids, their doctors would still refuse to uh, tie their tubes because they might change their mind. Okay, I can assure you that anyone who is transitioning has thought this out and, and, and have figured out how much of a transition they want to go to. If, if they were assigned male at birth and they have sperm, you know, maybe keep some of that, at, you know, in a bank so that they can have biological children later and all that sort of, like, people don't just transition on a whim. They've thought this through. You don't need to pat them on the head and tell them that you're looking after them, that you're doing what's in their best interest because only they know what's in their best interest, not you, not the government. Off that aspect of their life. I think that as adults, we, we have a, an obligation to ensure for kids that they preserve all of those important choices until they're adults, until they're able to make those decisions. I knew since I was about 16, I never wanted kids. Because you know that at that age. 
you, you can have that idea. Like some people might not be sure, but there are some people who definitely know they want kids. And there are some people who definitely know they don't. Like when, when you're a teenager, you are expected to make decisions that will affect the rest of your life. Like what college you go to, what jobs you have, the type of relationships you have, if you join the military and all that sort of stuff, you're expected at that age to already be making decisions that will have far reaching consequences in your life. But suddenly now when it comes to gender, you're incapable of making those decisions. Oh, and by the way, if you get pregnant, then you have to carry that baby and be a parent. Just ridiculous. With, uh, with the maturity that goes along with that. Okay, so we'll watch this again without me interrupting it so that you can hear it smoothly. I support the journey of, of adults who want to transition to another gender as, uh, as far as, um, as, as they are adults and able to, to accept the consequences of those decisions. I, I certainly do not want um, children to be making decisions before maybe they've even had sex about whether they want to, to, uh, to stop that aspect of their life or before they've even contemplated whether they want to have kids to cut off that aspect of their life. I think that as adults, we, we have a, an obligation to ensure for kids that they preserve all of those important choices until they're adults, until they're able to make those decisions with, uh, with the maturity that goes along with that. I so listen up kids, we want you having sex before you make any decisions like this. Ugh. Again, she thinks that after you've transitioned, you can't have sex. 